All right. So this questioner is going to ask a question about abortion. Some years ago, I learned that the number of reported abortions in the U.S. since the Roe versus Wade court decision is in the order of 65 million souls. That was amazingly dreadful. Then I also learned that the number of reported abortions outside the U.S. for the same interval exceeds 1 billion souls. Uh, and so the question, um, the, the questioner here is just observing that this is uh, certainly demonically inspired and asking the question, uh, what is the appropriate method or methods for CBC to respond to this horrendous attack on God's glory? Uh, I think that is the the first place to start is to recognize that this is attack on God's glory and, and specifically on the image of God that's created in his children. Um, you know, all through the Old Testament and even into the New Testament, uh, one of the main reasons that God um, <laughs> is so <laughs> is so jealous about human life is because it reflects his image. He wants us to value life, value life. Why? Because he values it. And, um, you know, I think in the Old Testament, when you think about, you know, taking the Lord's name in vain, like why, why was God so, so um, concerned about that? Really, as all that's saying is taking the name of God in a flippant way. Don't talk about God in a flippant way, because what happens is you dilute the meaning of it so that when you need to talk about it in a serious way, there's nothing left. And I think in the same way, that's one of the huge, huge problems with abortion right now, besides the fact that you're just losing life, of course, but you're, you, you have devalued life itself by saying, oh, that, that baby doesn't matter, that little thing doesn't matter, that little blob of tissue doesn't matter. And all of a sudden now you have, you have devalued life itself. And wow, that has an impact on culture, it has impacts on um, the gospel, and, uh, and even how people self-conceive of their own worth. So um, this is a hard sin to address because it's a quiet sin. It takes place behind closed doors. We don't, to hear those numbers, those staggering numbers of how many people have been destroyed by this horrendous sin. How many have seen even one? None of us. It all takes place behind closed doors, silently whisked away, and they come out and they don't talk about it. And so, so what do we do? Well, a couple of things I jotted down here. Uh, number one, and that's the first one, talk about it in your home. Talk about it. Talk about it with your kids. Don't assume that your children, just because they grew up in a Christian home, understand abortion. They do not understand it. Um, they're not getting this education at school. Uh, they will not get it anywhere in their develop in their educational development as a children. They must get it from the church. They must get it from the home. So talk about it. Number two, um, support websites that that do this kind of work. Uh, I have a friend, I'll just talk about this one because I know about it. I have a friend out of college, he's with my class, and when he left college, he said, I'm gonna make a website. And he, and he made a website, abort73.com, and all it is is an information site. It just gets the information out. And, uh, and he has testimony after testimony after testimony of people who said, I had no idea. I had no idea that this was really going on. And, um, and I think it's a tasteful site in the terms of how it, it, um, it, it is graphic when needed, but it's, but it's done well. The language is not inflammatory. Uh, it's informative, and, that's, and that should be the goal. Uh, many other great websites out there too, but I would just encourage you to support the information being distributed and find apologists, people who are willing to devote their life to just speaking and defending the, li the, the life of the unborn. There are and and uh, people are willing to do this, but it costs money. They need to be supported. So find people who are willing to do this. Um, of course, we have uh, our our ministry within Cypress Bible Church, the uh, pregnancy care clinic, and just just you know volunteer there. Be a voice to help. Um, be a voice to comfort. Be a voice to you know this is a very shameful thing that happens to women, and a lot of people want to just bury it. I don't want to. I don't want to think about it anymore. Be that loving arm. Put your arm around that that man or that woman who's in that situation and say, "Listen, I want to help you. We'll we'll get through this. Let's let's think about our options." Um, and and really, that's what's gonna 
enable that person to move forward with the courage and make make a hard decision and the right decision. Um, and then I would say, uh, you know, educate yourself. I've got, there's a couple great books out there. Um, one I know for sure is The Case for Life by Scott Klusendorf. Uh, a great book, again, to just educate yourself. It, 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 show, it shows, it's graphic, but it's, it's the right kind of graphic. And then, um, and then finally, I would just say, uh, pray and mourn uh, for the for the life that has been lost, and pray for those who are who are um, in that decision making process. I mean, pray that God would intervene and um, and help and help um, save <laughs> to. The life of the mom, right? The mom, the mom is the one who has to make the decision. So pray that guy intervenes in the in the life of the mom to help her make the right decision.